marine animals have been hunted for centuries. And today, as in ancient times, man has not stopped harvesting the oceans with ever more efficient fishing technologies and methods. Many small fishing boats are being replaced by large fishing vessels outfitted with modern equipment. And traditional fishing methods have long been replaced by advanced fishing methods. Many fish stocks are being overfished. This raises the question of how much fish can we really catch so that there will be enough left, not only for this year and the next, but also in the long run. Three quarters of the fish stocks in the EU are overfished. How can we prevent this from happening? There are two options. One is to regulate fishing efforts. For example, how many and what types of vessel should be allowed to fish in specific areas and for how long. The second option is to regulate the amount of fish landed at harbours. The limit is known as the Total Allowable Catch, or TAC. Politicians and officials in Brussels prefer to work with the TAC as a regulatory instrument. On a yearly basis, they set fishing limits, expressed in tonnes, for most commercially exploited fish stocks. These limits are then translated into fishing quotas for each EU country. The European Commissioner for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries is Maria Damanaki. Together with the Council of Ministers, she is responsible for establishing the yearly fishing quotas. We have to go for uh, control measures that can be easier to handle. And the quotas are rather easier to handle because we can uh, control landings. We can control whatever it's on shore, so we can be sure about the whole quantity of the fish that is removed to our sea. So this is a tool that is rather simple and can be handled. The objective of the quotas is clear to control the amount of fish being caught in the oceans so that there is sufficient fish stock, not only for today, but also 10 or 20 years from now. Fishing quotas, therefore, are one of the tools to ensure sustainable fishing. But how do we know how much to fish? How do we determine fishing quotas? It is the role of scientists to help provide answers. As a first step, they collect data directly from the oceans. Data on more than 100 different types of fish from all bodies of European waters where fish is caught. Once the data has been gathered, it is analyzed and interpreted by scientific experts so that, ultimately, politicians can determine fishing quotas. Pablo Carrera works as a scientist at the Spanish Oceanographic Institute, IEO. The decisions made in Brussels are based on his work and that of his colleagues. He's responsible for gathering and analyzing the data collected in his region. Together with his colleagues, he first spends several weeks on research ships in Spanish waters. Our oceans are populated with a variety of large schools of fish, but their lives remain mostly invisible to us. Oceans, being the largest habitats on Earth, are dark, cold, and extremely difficult to access. So in Europe, scientists have to collect all kinds of data and apply different kinds of technologies to access these difficult locations. Pablo uses a powerful sonar system to estimate the size of schools of fish in the Spanish waters and to distinguish them from the other marine life. He's especially interested in the stocks of sardines. This is uh, an ecotrace that's clear and it could be fish or plankton. Um, normally the way to distinguish between fish and plankton is just to look for the different uh, response for, for, the, for the different frequencies you have on board. Normally you will expect for the fish to have more is the same strength of the signal for the different frequencies. Recent data worries Pablo and his colleagues. The stocks of sardines they've been observing for several years have declined, but why? Just like every year, Pablo and his team take a sample of sardines for analysis in the lab. Atención, cubierta. En 30 minutos comenzamos el lance de pesca. 
Collecting samples on this boat is done the same way as fishing is done on any deep sea trawler. The crew members are experienced fishermen. They roll out the fishing net. This year, the sample consists of several tons of sardines. But that is not all. The scientists also take water samples from different depths because the water quality and temperature can influence the development of the sardines. In the lab of the Spanish Oceanographic Institute, scientists carefully analyze Pablo's sardine samples. Gender, size and weight of the fish are important indicators when it comes to determining the health of the stock. Internal organs can also tell scientists about the health of the fish. The tiny ear labyrinths of the sardines are important for fish age analysis. Looking at the ear labyrinths under the microscope, they can determine the age of the fish, similar to counting the annual rings of a tree. Once the scientists have combined this finding with observations of other collected data, they can conclude the sardines are two years old and healthy. But Pablo set out to understand why the sardine stock in the Spanish waters has been decreasing over the past few years. Since the fish are healthy and the water is clean, there must be other reasons. Climate change and especially overfishing likely play an important role. Studies like this are done all over Europe. The results are collected centrally not only for sardines, but also for over 100 other kinds of fish. The data is forwarded to Copenhagen. This is where the International Council for the Exploration of the Sea, ICES, is located. One of the Council's most important tasks is the analysis of fishing data from different EU fishing regions. The goal is to provide the politicians in Brussels with scientific advice on the fishing quotas for the coming years. Paul Denbol of ISIS knows nearly every marine scientist in Europe. For years, he's been involved in organizing the collection of fish data as well as its analysis. ISIS as an organization depends entirely on our member countries maintaining uh, scientific research, maintaining data collection with research vessels and, uh, and actually sending experts to the work which, uh, which we are doing. That's a resource base and, and it's extremely valuable to us. Every year, the data for nearly every type of commercially important fish is discussed at ISIS in detail. This usually takes about a week, often longer. ISIS is responsible for the North Atlantic, North Sea and the Baltic Sea, where most of the European fishery activity is carried out. The responsibility for the Mediterranean and Black Sea lies with the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, headquartered in Rome. Pablo's sardine data, as well as the information gathered by his colleagues in other European regions, is being intensely discussed by the scientists. At the end, they will prepare a written document suggesting the next year's catch quota for sardines. This process is the same for all the commercial fish stock. If they have good data on what is happening to a particular fish stock, the marine scientists will propose fish quotas that will ensure that the amount of fish does not decrease in the long run. This is called maximum sustainable yield. For David Miller from Wageningen University, this is the best approach. The principles of maximum sustainable yield are that we are utilizing the resource in the most appropriate way that allows it to continue to provide us with a healthy yield which stimulates the fishery, which feeds the people. So we try to get the most available productivity out of the stock. If the experts, on the other hand, know little about a particular fish stock, they will usually recommend a considerably lower catch quota. This is a cautious approach, which is taken to protect the fish stock. So the problem with scientific recommendations is that they can only be as good as the available data. There are many uncertainties. For example, climate change can cause fish populations to choose different routes, leading to confusing estimates. 
the information about the amount of fish landed also does not take into consideration how much dead fish is thrown back into the ocean or how many fish catches go unreported. This complicates the calculations of scientists, who know that their numbers can influence the lives of many fishermen. ICES does focus a lot on the biology of stocks, but they do also try to look across the other implications of fisheries. Uh, for example, when we do management plan evaluations, we'll also try to consider economic and social implications of those management plans. But irrespective of the numbers obtained, the scientists involved only regard these figures as scientific advice, a basis for politicians and other officials to make policy decisions. I think the role of science is to ensure that we have transparency and that we are well informed about what we do. So we should be brave, come forward with what we know, but we shouldn't make the policy choices. So every year, scientists from ISIS send their most recent numbers to the European Commission. Political decisions about fish quotas are made in Brussels. Until a few years ago, the actual catch quotas deviated considerably from the scientists' recommendations. Justine Maillot from Greenpeace knows this. For years we had this system of more of quota trading and horse trading, where they were negotiating quota, and it was not transparent at all, fi finishing at four in the morning. So of course, for citizens, it's really difficult. So you wake up in the morning and you have the results, but it's, it, it was really an untransparent process, and it, it is still. Um, but we, we need to improve the transparency around EU decision making in general. Previously, scientists would recommend, for example, a 100,000 tonne quota for a specific fish species. The European Commission would then recommend 105,000 tonnes to the responsible ministers in the individual EU countries, who would finally decide together, behind closed doors, on a quota of 150,000 tonnes. We have to take some decisions but then we have to discuss uh, with uh, the Council of Ministers and uh, the national governments. And what uh, comes out at the end of the day is uh, a compromise, I can say, between what we are saying, which usually is the scientific advice, and what they decide. And um, I can say to you that there were a lot of discrepancies in the past, but uh, throughout the last four years we have less and less problems. In the future, the decision makers will need to adhere more closely to the recommendations of the scientists. A recommendation of 100,000 tonnes will lead to a quota close to 100,000 tonnes. This approach will be a big step towards sustainable fisheries. In 2015, the EU will be introducing sustainable fishing practice for the first time since its foundation. So this is the great change that the new fisheries policy is bringing. We are not going, we are bound, everybody is bound, even the national governments now, that we are going to follow a scientific-based approach. And this is the great change. So I think that the uh, issues and the discussions in the Council will be simpler, will be simpler, because everybody will know that we have to follow scientific advice. But there is a but here. And uh, the but is that we need uh, a good quality of scientific advice. So ultimately, the fishing quota decisions are made by the Council of Ministers, composed of the fisheries ministers from individual EU countries. As soon as the total catch amount for a particular fish stock has been established, the individual national and regional quotas are calculated based on a set distribution key. Still, there are many regions in Europe, such as the Mediterranean or Spanish coastal waters, where the general quota system needs to respect particular local conditions. For example, many boats are shorter than 10 meters, and fishing takes place close to the coast. Here, a general catch quota is not sufficient to protect fishermen from larger boats with more sophisticated equipment. The fishermen need to be heard and become involved when it comes to deciding about the way fishing is to be done in their region. But to make things happen about co-management, um, we are going through a regionalization process, which means 
that if they participate in the advisory councils, they can take decisions, very important decisions, for themselves. Because now the local advisory councils are going to decide on very important issues. For example, technical measures. All the technical measures used, they are decided there. And if they can have a decision, then the European Commission just goes for it. So for this moment, uh, we are not going to have, uh, to have the same procedure as we have in the past, as we had in the past, to decide everything here in Brussels. They can decide. At all levels, be it large fishing fleets in the deep sea or small fishing boats along the coast, the key is to ensure the fish are caught in a sustainable way. We need to make sure we uh, reduce catch limits to sustainable levels so that we can recover fish stocks. And then uh, these uh, coastal communities that depend on fishing and those fishermen from the coast can continue to live from fishing for decades, for, for the whole future. According to scientists, fishing quotas for currently overfished species in the Atlantic can likely be increased after 2020. But what are the fishermen going to do until then? Does the EU provide any solutions for this? Sometimes there is pain there. That's why we're trying to do everything in order to, to give compensations, to give incentives, to try to find alternatives for their income, to, to give money for alternatives, for example, for um, um, some period of um, traditional tourism or using their boats in another way or protecting the sea. We are trying. We are going to do our, our best. But at the end of the day, we would like to have this change. The European Union is on the right track. Proper regulation of fish quotas is an important contribution to sustainable fishing. There is still a lot of work to be done by fishermen, politicians and scientists. But if we put more effort into implementing sustainable ideas, the fish and the fishermen will have a chance of survival.